Hi, and welcome to the Resources Roadhouse. I'm Wally Graham, and I'm at the 2019 Brisbane Resources Roundup, and I'm with Bronwyn Barnes, who is chairman of uh, Indiana Resources. Now, um, Bronwyn, Indiana Resources, uh, you have an Africa focus, uh, looking uh, at in Mali in particular, where you've got um, a, a gold play over there. Correct. Um, we'll start with that. We'll start with the Mali. Sure. Uh, uh, so, uh, you yeah, uh, give us a rundown on your gold project in Mali. Okay, so we've assembled a group of tenements in um, up in the Mali Shear che- uh, Zone, um, up on the border with Senegal, and um, really this is a zone that's had an enormous amount of historic production. Probably 60 million ounces have come out of that region in a 100 kilometre radius from our project site. Um, and we've put together a ground package of about 360 square k's of ground. Um, some of that has had drilling on it, but a lot of it is pretty, you know, green fields, exploration okay. ground. Yeah. So working on the theory of best place to find a mine is next to a mine. That's the strategy that we're working on. Okay. So um, um, I've known of um, Indiana for oh, a few years now, what, mm. you, what you've been up to out yeah. there. You've um, yeah, you've uh, completed a bit of work uh, in, in the Marley Project. Sure. What's the name of the Marley Project again? Is it? Uh, well, we call it the West Marley Gold Project. Okay. So that's comprised of a number of different tenements. So we've got Sabasiri, Kenieko, Casanto and uh, Kusikoto. Okay. And, so. and of those, which is the sort of like, which wins, uh, fav- which, which is the favourite child? Well, it's um, you can't ever say who your favourite child is, really. <laughs> no, <it's all> right. <laughs> As a mother, <laughs> yeah, promise I won't tell. Okay. Yeah. But look, um, I think definitely we've got some projects there that have had um, more advanced exploration work than others. Yep. So for us, the Casanto and the Kusikoto tenements are, are the projects that are drill ready today. Right. Um, Sabasiri um, and Kenieko um, need a bit more pre work on them, and by pre work, we want to go back and do mapping. We want to do some soil sampling in the upcoming field season um, and we would like to put some holes in it before the rainy season commences in August next year. Okay mm. all right so that's Mali that's pretty yeah. much Mali in a nutshell isn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. where we're, we're sort of Great at Great location moment. largest holder of exploration ground right next to all the majors. Well it doesn't get any better. No it doesn't get any better than that Wally. Oh well there we go. <laughs> So uh, your other um, focus in Africa, I believe, is, it, um, I'm, I'm going to say this wrong, Tan- Tanzania? Tanzania, yeah. Oh, come on. Yeah. I know. Australians say Tanzania, South Africans say Tanzania. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, there oh. you go. There's one for the books. Um, so look, I've just returned from Tanzania. We've had um, an asset there for many years. Um, it's a nickel sulphide project. Um, historically, it's had $60 million US spent on exploration and development or pre-development activities. Yep. So there was a bankable feasibility study completed for that in 2014. Uh, we followed that up with a, a scoping study in 2017 that was trying to focus on a smaller high grade development option. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in 2018 obviously we had changes to the Tanzanian Mining Code um, which has resulted in some lack of clarity around okay. our tenure for the asset. Yep. Uh, basically this was an asset held on a retention licence um, retention license provisions were removed from the mining code, and now we're in a process of engaging with the government around having it reawarded back to us as a prospecting license. All oh, right, okay. So that's sort of like a, that's a, an application type process. It's not you don't you don't have to undertake any extra work out on the no, field. No. Um, look, what I have done is put a proposal together for the government that outlines the next phase for us of development of that asset. Okay. Uh, so what we would like to do is spend another couple of million US on that in drilling. We think that there's an opportunity to upgrade the existing resource model from the 2014 bankable feasibility study. Uh Um, And we think that this is an asset that's perfectly suited to the battery nickel market. So, you know, for us, this is a real opportunity to to target that market. Um, So, look, what I'm proposing to the government is that we undertake that drilling. We do progress um, an update to the feasibility study, and we also complete the environmental and social impact assessment. Okay. So, and that will get us in a position to then apply for a mining licence. Oh, and and once you do that, of course, then we can start, you know, moving forward with uh, all the exploration work and all the technical work. Yeah, that's right. And I think, you know, at the moment, the market 
cap of the company doesn't reflect any value for Nataka Hill, obviously mm-hmm. because we're in a resolution phase with the government. Yep. Um, but what we would like to do is um, is get that done pretty quick. Well, that sounds uh, very exciting. It sounds yeah. like there's uh, yeah, yeah, we've got plenty to look forward to as far as Indiana goes. Lots of news flow coming. Oh, let's hope so. Yeah. Yeah, let's hope so. <laughs> and we'll be looking forward to that and we'll be looking forward to bringing it to you on the Resources Roadhouse. Bronwyn Barnes. Thanks, Wally. Thank you. <laughs> 